Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Make Marketing Yours. And I'm your host, Vanessa Choi. And today I've got a very special guest here with us and she is Sam Wedge. And Sam's, uh, Sam's actually helps busy business owners turn their content into courses and she has a lot of experience in course creation. So Sam, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. So Sam, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and also um, can you talk about why you're so into helping business owners to actually helping their course creation? Yeah, so hi, I'm Sam. Sam Winch, which is really silly because my name sounds like lunchtime food. So <laughs> I've kind of given up on that. I just have to embrace it. Um, I've been building courses for more years than I care to count now because it makes me feel a little bit old. But um, the truth is I didn't start in courses at all. I actually came from retail and then I moved into management and then I left because I was fed up of working, you know, one of those stupid 60 hours a week, never oh, see my kids yeah. kind of a job. And um, when I left, it was kind of then that I realized actually all the experience that I had was really about teaching people. Whenever you work with more than one person, if you work with a team, you're constantly teaching. Whenever you work, even with customers, you're educating them on how to buy from you. You're educating them on your sales processes. You're educating them on all sorts of things. So really all of my career experience had been training. I just hadn't realized it. So it was then when I left, I kind of accidentally fell into a job that was building courses for a company. And I found that I was really good at it. And um, someone said to me, oh, you're a natural. I went, well, actually, I think I've got a lot of experience. I just didn't realize. So that's kind of how it all started. And because of, it became such a natural fit, my background in sales and marketing actually read, re, led really nicely to course creation without meaning to. So that's, that's how I ended up here. Wow, that's very interesting. And I know that you actually have four kids, right? Yes. <laughs> how do you actually get a balance between your business and like manage your kids and manage your family? Like, how do you do that? Childcare. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I love my kids dearly. The older two are at school. So school hours is really helpful. Yep. And the younger two go to daycare four days a week. And yeah, with a one-year-old and a two-year-old as well, I just, it, without those couple of daycare days, it would be near on impossible. I'm going to be honest. And hats off to mums who don't have daycare days. Yeah, I know. Oh, you're such an awesome mom. I don't know whether I can manage like four kids and with my business and the family. Like, oh, they're just crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, cause I think like now online courses is really hot in the market. Everybody talk about course creation. So can you tell um, us a little bit about the difference between a course and a membership? What's the difference between the two? So for me, the biggest difference between a course and a membership is timeline. So mm. a course has a beginning and an end. Memberships are much more open. So you might pay for six months or 12 months of a membership, yeah. but as a general rule, you're not following a specific timeline. Um, the other big difference about between a course and a membership is about content in order. So a course should lead you from a beginning to an end, right? It should, you start by learning step one and step two and step three as a general rule. With a membership, it's a lot less structured. So, and that's really the biggest difference between the two. They come with similar things. You might have a portal to sign in. You might get support classes. You might get live calls. But the biggest difference is that process and structure. Right. So from your personal experience, do you prefer to actually host a, like a, to create a course or to actually host a membership? What is your preference? I think they serve two different purposes. Mm -hmm. I've done both within my business yeah. and I've done both with clients. But um, I think if your clients are actively looking to learn something that they will need a lot of support in, a membership is really useful. Um, if it's something where they can have a little bit more independence with their learning, then a course is useful. The other thing with a membership is it allows you to guide people through who are at different stages. So they might not all come in at exactly the same step. And that's okay because the way a membership is structured, you can work with that. Whereas a course requires really for most people to start at the same level and end at the same level. So it kind of depends, like, where is your target audience? Are they varied? Do they need some really good handholding? Like, what do they want from you yeah. as, and what's going to work the best for them yeah so probably different business will have different like you know preference yeah some some people will opt in for courses and some people will opt in for membership sites so yes so yeah. for someone who's actually new to the online course creation where should they start <laughs> that's a really good question because it's a really big thing right now yep. uh, there's normally a couple of things that i suggest to people that they start with one is working out what is the outcome of the course you want to teach so like myself, most of the clients I work with have a million and one ideas. 
right? They're like so many things they want to cover and so many things they could teach. Um, but the truth is what you need to do before you get anywhere is just nail down one thing, just one single outcome. And if you can work that out, well, then the other pieces fall into place because when you know that one single outcome, you can start to think about content. When you know that one single outcome, you yeah. can start to think about delivery. But until you've nailed down that one single thing, everything else is too open-ended. There's too many yeah. options. And that's, I think, why people feel so overwhelmed. It's because they're trying to, they don't have one clear thing in mind. And so they're looking at all of the options available and there's, there's too many, right? There's, there's too many things out there. Yeah, definitely. So do you mean that they should actually focus on one topic to achieve one goal in that course? Yep. That's normally my biggest advice, especially if it's a first time course. So most of the clients I work with come to me because they want to build this huge, like six, 12 month full support program. I'm going to teach them everything they need to know about business. For example, like you can't, right? I've yeah. been in business for myself for 10 years. I can't, I still don't know everything firstly, mm -hmm. but B I can't fit 10 years of experience into one yes. course. It doesn't fit. So yeah, the best thing to do is think about just one topic and even better, just one specific outcome. So say to yourself, by the time they finish my course, what will they know or be able to do? And that should be one sentence. Yeah. And you can build from that. It can always expand. It can always grow. But if you start there, your life is going to be a whole much easier. And so is theirs because they're not having to sign up for this huge course and get overwhelmed. They just sign up for one thing and then you solve their problem. Such a good advice. So when people first start out, let's say for the first course, what is the duration? Do you think like four weeks, six weeks, or should they focus on more like a low ticket offer? Like, you know, a lot of people talk about tiny offer now, or should be like a six week course if they first started? What is Sometimes, so if they're first starting, it depends on what they have the ability to do. So, um, for a lot of first time course creators, they might be doing this on the side of perhaps work or, or as a side hustle. So the thing with running a live four week or six week program is it needs support, right? They need to help on the way through. And it's quite possible that if you're running your business on your side, you might not have enough time to fully support them for four weeks or six weeks. That's so in that case, the kind of more passive tiny offer is better because you don't need to be there as much holding their hand. If you've got the time in your business, if you've got the opportunity to support your clients, those four weeks and six weeks and eight week programs can be a great thing to do, but they require you to be there and you just True. need to make sure you can do that. Yeah. The support is very important. I think for people mm. to sign up to your course. So um, what is the best structure for, for like a course? What should they focus on? Well, <laughs> that is a really good question too. There are lots of things I think they should focus on, but the first thing is that any piece of content you give them, should have a clear action step. So I think people forget this, right? We get so busy recording videos and teaching them things that we forget that actually it's not about us teaching them something. It's about them learning how to do something. And for them to learn, they need to start taking action, right? You, I'm sure you're the same as me. I can watch hundreds of videos, but it's not until I do it myself that I really understand. And they're the same, right? So the best thing you can do when it comes to structuring your content, other than breaking it down into tiny, tiny little bite-sized pieces is to make sure that for every one of those pieces, there is one clear thing they have to go and do like, right. and so, sit down and ask yourself, right? Okay. I've just recorded that video. What do I want them to do now they've watched that video? What is in it for them? And if you can do that the whole way through your content, you'll come out with a really clear structure just because you've thought about it so carefully. So how do you actually motivate people to actually take action? Because I know like even for myself, I bought so many courses mm -hmm. in the past, right? I don't think I actually finished like, you know, all of them. I don't think maybe 50, even like 60% of them. So how do you actually motivate people to actually go like go through all your modules, done everything? Yeah. And you know what, if you've done 50 or 60%, you're probably actually in like the higher <laughs> tier of people. A lot of people have bought more than that and done less. Um, <laughs> You're right. It's hard because we're so used to buying lots of things. And yes. some of the things we've already discussed will help with this. So if you have a smaller course that solves one problem, they're going to be more likely to do it because they're not going to open it and feel as overwhelmed. True. So normally that's the thing that stops people is that they open it with the best of intentions and that they either get stuck somewhere and go, oh, it's too hard. Or they get to a task that they've been asked to do and it takes too long. Mm. Right? Or they reach a video that's like, an hour and a half and it's too long yes. and they go away and they go, oh, I'll get back to that later. 
And you and I both know that later never happens. Uh -huh. That's so true. Like even with that one hour video, I have to break into like five or six, six, seven times to finish the whole thing. Yes. Yep. So those things that we've already spoken about, like offering, having one clear outcome and breaking your content down into teeny tiny steps, those are going to naturally make it easier to do because your audience hopefully won't reach that point where they get to something and go, oh, that's too big. I'll come back to that later. So what we want to try and do is you want to make sure that when they open the computer and sit down to do your course, that they can do the thing they sat down to do without getting distracted or getting pulled away. And so we need to make it easy, not necessarily like easy as in they're just, there's nothing to learn, but easy as in we take away some of those objections so that it's too hard. I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to press those sorts of objections. If we can remove those, then they're much more likely to do the thing that we've asked them to do. Yeah, true. And also give them like a small wins. If they feel they achieve something, they're likely more like to go on to finish. Definitely. The course. Yeah. Yeah. So you have been building so many online courses for your clients or also for yourself. What do you normally see the problems or issues that they are having? Like a common problems that the clients have. Yeah. Um, time is a big one. So we get busy, right? Running our business. And I'm the same. I'm actually really bad at building my own courses because I get busy with everyone else's courses. Yep. Um, so time is a big one. And that's the same in, in most industries. Um, you know, time to do your social media, time to do your marketing, time to do it's Yeah. Right. We all hear that. <laughs> so, um, and I'm sure I'm going to suggest the same thing that you will suggest, which is you just, you have to dedicate the time. You have yep. to schedule it into your calendar. You have to sit down and sort it out. Um, the other big thing is they get stuck somewhere, um, sometimes with planning their content because they get overwhelmed or they get stuck with the tech. Um, and there, there is a lot of tech out there now that there are hundreds of course platforms. There are lots of different ways you can record video. Um, so the places they tend to get stuck then is with making a decision about how they're going to do it. True. So people like actually spend a lot of time like deciding which platform or how do I do this, but they ac didn't actually think about like the whole course. Like they really focus on the tech. Yes. And I see a lot of clients focusing on the tech like before it's even a problem. And I, in fact, I was talking to a client about this just last week. She was on a first call and she's like, I'm thinking about doing a course. And she's like, I'm like, okay. She's like, oh, oh but I don't know which platform to use. I'm like, it doesn't matter yet. You don't have a course. Exactly. Right? Like, <laughs> exactly. You don't have that problem yet. Let's come yeah. back. Let's worry about that later. Yeah, exactly. So I've done actually um, like a call with a potential client and she actually asked me a lot of questions about like which platform for hosting the website and also hosting a membership. You know, she doesn't even have a course or niche down what she wants yep. to do. But that's very interesting. There's more like a common problem, I think. Yeah. And I think it's the same. I mean, courses really they will mirror most other aspects of business, right? Of the marketing and the development and all those sorts of things. People have the same problems and the same objections. They procrastinate the same way. They get stuck in the same way. They get overwhelmed in the same way. Um, it's very similar. Yeah, that's true. And now I know that a lot of entrepreneurs, like same as myself, I like to DIY. And some people actually hire you to, um, to build their courses. So when is the best time or when do people think, okay, now I have to outsource the courses to someone else to do it for me instead of me doing it. So when do people know that is the time that they need help? So normally the biggest thing is when you are stopping yourself from doing it. So if you can schedule the time, that's, that's great. But if you're genuinely too busy with client work or client load, and that's for most of my clients who I see, they're not startups, right? The startups, you have the time, you don't have the yeah. budget. The clients I see have normally been in business five, six, seven years. They've got a big client load. They are busy. They genuinely don't have the time in their day to do it. And that's when, like, if you, if you can't make the time, if you, if you can't do it yourself for some reason, that's the best time to outsource it. If you are getting in your own way, give it to someone else, yeah. right? Because you're the problem. But for a lot of people, if you're willing to DIY it, there are some great things out there to help you. There are lots of really easy user-friendly platforms. I know you and I met because um, we both use a very similar platform. So, yeah. um, that, you know, there's lots of ways you can DIY it. So it's not a problem at all. But if you... If you are getting really, really stuck and can't move forward, or you're just getting in your own way all the time, it might be worth reaching out to someone. That's very good advice. So if people want to launch a course, so in terms of the promotion, when should they actually start promoting their course? 
<laughs> How long is a piece of string? Um, <laughs> it, it look, and honestly, probably this is more of a marketing question. This is possibly right up your alley slightly more than mine. Um, for some of my clients, we start eight to 10 weeks out. For some, we start a really big promo two to three weeks out. Um, it varies and it does vary a lot depending on a price point yeah. and B how many people they've already got on their list. If they've got a substantial list of leads and potential clients already, and we've got a warm market to market mm -hmm. to heaps easier. If we don't, if we don't have a big list or we've got a really cold audience, then we start marketing a lot earlier. So we've got time to warm them up and build into that. So it depends, which I know isn't yeah. a great answer, but yeah, it's not the same for every client. A very good, like, great discussion. So um, do you think before building the course, people should be building their email list to have like more warm leads before they actually launch something? Even if it's not before building the course, at the same time as building mm. the course. Because I do get that. I get a lot of clients who've got, and some great courses, right? They've put all their heart and soul into building this amazing course, but who don't have an existing business or who don't have an existing list. And then all they've got is this great, amazing course, but no one's taking it. Yeah. Um, and that's horrible because they've poured their heart and soul into building that thing. Like that's, that's not great for them. So yes, it does help to have a warm audience. And even if you don't start beforehand, start now, like yeah. tomorrow is too late. Start today. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So if people want to work with you to, you know, hire you to design their course or to build their course, what is the, what are their options? How do they work with you? So my work with me way is really flexible because, um, and my, my catchphrase goes that every course is different, just like every person is different and every sandwich is different. Um, so <laughs> it really depends on what the client needs. For some clients, they come to me and I take everything off their hands. We build their PDFs, we edit their videos, we, like the whole kit and caboodle. But a lot of clients don't need that. And sometimes they just need a single call where we sit together, we have a chat and I tell them exactly what to go away and do next. Um, so the process is really varied because there isn't, there isn't one right answer when it comes to courses. There isn't one right platform. There isn't one right thing, right? It really depends on the course and the client and, and their target market. Like, what are we building? Who are we serving? So it's really varied, but it all starts with the chat. We get yeah. together on a call, we have a chat, we work out what they're trying to do and we provide the best solution for them. Yeah, so the, so the best way to actually work with you will be like having a chat with you first, right? And then decide what is the good like process or how do we work together like the best way? Yeah, exactly. And I do a lot of course chats and if we're doing the bigger projects, especially off the back of that, we do a personalized proposal because there isn't, like I can't necessarily sell someone into a package deal because most of my clients are building something that's quite unique. And because of that, we want to make sure that the service that I provide and my team who, who helps me provide the services, we want to make sure that the service is unique, that it suits them in the way they want. Yeah, definitely. So um, I know that you actually got some freebies like on your, like in your member vault like membership site. Can you tell us a bit about your freebies? Yeah. So there's a bunch of things over there, um, eBooks and guides and things that would help, but my, I go cheat cause it's an almost freebie. Um, I have a program called five days to course clarity. It's $5. So it's almost free. Um, I actually, my 11 year old son decided it should be $5 cause his theory was it should be a dollar a day. So there you go. <laughs> he decided that. I like that. <laughs> Um, but so five days to course clarity takes people through the five things they should think about when they're first starting out with their course. It gets them to think about things like business strategy. It gets them to think about things like pricing. It gets them to think about things like audience. And it's really there because a lot of the clients I find are confused and stuck and overwhelmed because they haven't thought about those things first. And so it makes the whole course process easier because you just make some decisions at the beginning. And once you've decided what you want to do, everything becomes a lot easier. So yeah, five days to course clarity is where I suggest people start. Yeah, excellent. So what about the course creation checklist? So I know that you actually got a checklist. So can you talk about that? Yeah, so I see quite a few clients who come to me who actually have most of a course ready or have DIY'd it and have their course ready, but now they're nervous. So they're worried that it's not good enough, that it's not quite right, that they haven't done it, that they haven't included everything, you know. I know that you're nodding along because I've been there too, right? You make this thing, you're like, oh my God, is it good enough? Is it finished? Um, and so that's what the course creation checklist is. It's a, a PDF checklist and a full ex explanation video that takes you step-by-step step through some of the things you should think about before you press go on your course or before you put your first students in. It, I used to call it a course audit. Audit is a really boring word and a really hard sell. No one wants to buy an audit, um, but it's 
That's essentially what it is. So it guides you through going through all the things that you should have thought about before you let people into it. And it's really just there to help you double check, right? Just to make sure it's okay before you press go. Excellent. It sounds a very good checklist. So will you be able to offer some like special discount to our audience today? <laughs> yeah. So the course creation checklist is only $27 anyway, but you guys can have $10 off because you're lovely. So um, $17 each and um, code word for that is Vanessa because that's where you're coming from. Oh, thank you. So what I'll do, I'll put all the links like your social media links like in the show notes and also your special offer to our audience. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. So before we go, do you have any things that like, you know, you want to tell our audience to talk about that? Yep. Yeah. The biggest thing I just want to say is trust yourself. Like a lot of the people I see, they're stuck in doubt, but the truth is, you know, your stuff, you know, your audience, right? You know, your audience and your content better than I do. I can teach you strategy, but you know, your stuff. So trust yourself, believe in yourself because you can make an awesome course if you believe that you can. Yeah. And also a lot of time, probably it's about tweaking well, the first time when you launch, you might flop, you know, the course, but then you need to trick, you know, and revisit your course, see whether something that might need to change, then launch another time, like launch a second time. So, you know, yeah. So true. Great advice. Nothing is ever, actually, nothing is ever finished. Like there's always more tweaking that can be done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So thank you so much for your time today, Sam. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.